Hello, this is Mr. Doro. The purpose of this little video is to help you to determine slope and relationships from that slope and be able to apply them in equations. Hold on and we're going to get going. Well, this is usually where we start. We start with a little t-chart. This is a t-chart right over here. And I have time versus beats in this case. My time is in seconds. My beats are just beats. And so I plotted some data right here that will help us going from 0 to 100 on the beats and 0 to 60 seconds on the time. And I'm going to go ahead and plot this data and then we're going to try to do a best fit line. Okay, now I have it plotted. Now, not all those lines line up the best, but they're pretty good. And so I'm going to try to draw a best fit line. I'm doing this freehand, so I may not hit it all the way. The best fit line doesn't necessarily have to hit every dot. There we go. It doesn't have to necessarily hit every dot, but it has to represent all the dots unless there's one that's way off. So what I'm going to do next is calculate the slope of my best fit line. And so if I have a proper best fit line, I should be able to calculate the slope. The slope is the change in the y-axis, the coordinates on the y-axis, over the change in the coordinates on the x-axis. And so a lot of times what I like to do is I like to pick a point and remember, we have to pick the line. We can't necessarily pick these points over here, the points that are on our T-chart, unless they are absolutely on the line. Now, none of my points really are absolutely on the line. And so, well, maybe one of them. But I'm going to pick a point that looks like it's right on my line. And I'm going to pick this point right um, here, right about there. And because that kind of crosses a nice spot. And I'm going to pick another one that crosses a nice spot, which is right there. Now I'm going to see how far it goes over and how far it goes up. So I'm going to draw a little right triangle there. And if I go down here to this point, da, 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 right down here, then this is at 42. And so my x-axis is at 42 there. And down here it's at 14. So the difference in my x-axis is going to be 42 minus 14, which is 28 seconds. And then I do the same thing for my y-axis. I started down here at 30, and I went up to, let's see, I went up to 85. So I would do 85 minus 30, which is 55 beats in this case. Now we're going to calculate the slope. And the slope is figured out by the rise, the amount we went up, that's 55 beats. So I have 55 beats over how far we went over, which is 28 seconds. And so in chemistry, we like to have a decimal. We don't like to have that fraction in there because we're going to use it for something different here or put it in when we put it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to calculate that, 55 divided by 28. And the slope I ended up with was 1.96, and watch this, we're going to put the units in here, beats per second. And that's the same thing as saying 1.96 beats for every one second. So then we can make for every statements. The for every statement would come right from this slope that we have. And it would say something like this. For every increase of 1.96 beats, there's an increase of one second. And then we could switch that around too. For every increase of one second, there's an increase of 1.96 beats. And so that's the for every statement that we're going to use. Now there's one other step that I want to add on to this, and this is the slope-intercept form for our best fit line that we just did. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And remember, m is the slope, and so instead of m, we're just going to put in the slope. But not only that, we know what the y-axis is. The y-axis is the number of beats right here. And we know what the x-axis is. It's the time in seconds. So instead of y and x, we're going to put in the time in the beats. So we're going to do that right here. In our slope-intercept form, we just made this. The beats, or the y-axis, are equal to the slope, which is 1.96 beats per second beats per second, times x, which in this case is the time or the number of seconds. And so I just replaced the y with beats, the x with seconds, and then what about this b right here, this um, 
whatever this is, the B, it's the y-intercept. And now the y-intercept in chemistry, if we are very close to the origin, which we are right here, it doesn't go right through the origin, but it's very close, then we can say that it's negligible. It doesn't even really matter for the formulas that we're using. And so we wouldn't even include it. Now, if it's way up here or something, then we do have to include it. That does make a difference. But this is my new formula that I just calculated here about how we can relate beats to seconds. So now I can pick any point right here. If I said, well, according to my best fit line, what if I had 5,000 beats? How many seconds would it be? Well, all you got to do then is you got to place in here where it says beats. You put 5,000 in there and then you solve for seconds. And so the beats would be 5,000. You would divide then by 1.96 to get the number of seconds. Or if you said, according to my best fit line, how many beats would it be if I had, I don't know, 150 seconds. So 150 seconds is way down here and it's way off our chart. But we can figure out where that would be by putting in 150 seconds in for the seconds. And it'll tell us how many beats. So 1.96 times 150 will tell us how many beats according to our best fit line that we have right here. There should be in that many seconds. This should help you in order to find slope and to make an equation. And remember, this is our really our slope intercept form, but we came up with this from our best fit line. I hope this helps. Bye-bye.